so that sucked. You know, I I played that wrong. I, I should have waited because he was coming. He was following that doe. And, I mean, that doe walked at 20 yards. What's up, YouTube? It's Mark again, and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So we get a lot of people coming up to us all the time saying, man, you guys are such great hunters. I wish I was as good as you guys. And we always laugh because we're not that great. We just put in a lot of time and eventually that will pay off. And I think the reason that people have this impression of us is because maybe we don't show enough um, of the hunts that didn't go uh, as well as we had hoped. And so this hunt um, is one that didn't end well and that clip was actually uh, part of the interview that I did after having an encounter with a buck that uh, didn't go as planned. So in this video, I'm gonna kind of walk you through how this hunt set up, um, where the mistakes were made, um, and how this eventually went wrong. And hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes um, and prevent this from happening to you in the future. So let's get into the video. A big deer and he didn't go 30 yards oh my god <laughs> that was the first buck i've ever shot Woo, what a rush money that deer is dead tagged out baby <laughs> you shot one yeah hell yeah dude. i saw him go what? down And before we dive right in, let me just uh, throw out a quick uh, word from our sponsors. Actually, it's not a word from our sponsors. It's our own word. We just really support our sponsors. So um, we've got wood hunting saddles. In case you guys haven't noticed, we've been rocking their saddles. And we met them at the Florida Outdoor Expo this year and, and just started looking at some of their gear, got in touch with the owners. They're super cool people. They're right here in Florida. So, you know, we love supporting those local companies. And then on top of all of that, their saddles are just the best that we've ever tried. And we've tried pretty much all of them. Uh, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. And these wood hunting saddles, especially the deluxe, is just phenomenal. So if you're looking at getting into saddle hunting, uh, think about getting yourself a wood hunting saddle and you can use the code SNS10 to get 10% off of that. And on top of that, they actually recently started making their deluxe saddle using our SNS High Pine camo. Um, and you can get a full outfit of the High Pine camo on our website. That's swampandstompllc.com. And there'll be a link down in the description for all of these things if you're interested in doing that. But here's a picture of what you would look like if you have all this stuff in the SNS High Pine camo. And without further ado, let's get into it. So in case you missed last week's video, uh, just a quick recap, but honestly, you should go watch that video first because it's awesome. Um, and I'll try to remember to put a card right up there uh, so you can click on that and go check it out. But in case you don't feel like watching it, here's a quick recap. Uh, me and Danny sat in the spots that we had scouted for the entire first day and didn't see a deer. I finally saw a deer on the um at the very end of the first afternoon um, i was expecting to see a ton of deer so i was feeling pretty um i was feeling pretty discouraged uh because i was expecting to see a lot there'd been a lot of activity um at the scrapes that were by the tree that i had picked out and when i went back in there uh, for opening morning those scrapes didn't really have a lot of activity so and then Adding on top of that, that I really didn't see any deer and I could see for hundreds of yards, uh, kind of had me debating not staying in that tree and moving somewhere else. But last year, I moved around too much. I ended up sort of hopscotching around because I didn't have confidence in the places um, that I had picked. And, you know, I, I ended up missing opportunities to to encounter a deer that would like walk by my camera when I wasn't there. So this year I promised myself that I was going to stick to the spots that I picked and I needed to trust my instincts 
in finding those spots when I was scouting um, to get the job done. So I, I decided to stick to it. I, after I saw that a little spike come out the night before, I was like, I'm gonna just keep hunting it. So I get out there in the morning and the sun is just barely coming up. And I look over and I spot a deer out in the field. And this is um, that deer. I zoom in the camera, I bust out my binoculars and lo and behold, it's a buck. It's a legal buck. It's a pretty good buck for this area, way down south in Florida. That's a, that's a nice buck. So, um, kind of watched it for a while, and um, you know, part of the problem was it was directly downwind from me. Um, and I, I, I kind of wanted to call to it, but I also didn't want to call when it was directly downwind and have it walk straight to me um, and then wind me. So I just waited, because at this point it's like 200 yards away, so it couldn't smell me yet. So I just waited until it moved off to the side, and then finally I let one rip, and it definitely hurt me. It looked up but it just kept on eating. Um, and by the way, all the deer you see in this video and in the last video in this particular spot, all that they were eating was those beauty berries. And I pointed out in a scouting video that deer love eating those beauty berries. And this video is proof of that. They were just chowing down on them. But anyway, so I called to him and he just keeps on munching out. He, he walks a little bit further and now he's like way out of the like downwind area. So I call again. He's sort of along uh, a brush line. So I figured if I got his attention now and he decided to come that way, he would follow that edge right past the stand at 20 yards and it would have been perfect. But he doesn't care about my calling. As I'm calling to this buck, uh, I suddenly hear something behind me and another buck had, I guess, heard the calling and came, came running in to check it out. Um, and this, this little spike, which I think was the same spike I saw the night before, he comes running in right under my tree, 20 yards. You know, if, if he was legal, I could have smoked him, but, um, he came in from, you know, upwind, you know, totally perfect. And he, he passes by and goes the other way. The other buck kind of disappears at this point. He goes off into the brush and, uh, you know, I, I was hopeful that he was going to come back out because I had those scrapes, um, you know, near, near the stand. So I, I figured he was going to come and check them at some point. So, um, as this little buck walks past, I look over to my left and I realize there's another deer standing, uh, kind of over, you know, about a hundred yards away from me on the other side of this little clearing down the brush line there's a there's a, uh, a head of palm trees down there um, and a ton of beauty berries and there you know there's this deer munching out right there so I'm looking at that one and I hear some crunching I move the camera over and out comes another two does so now I got three or four does over there I've got this one little buck walking down the right side um, does on the left bucks a uh, little buck on the right and that, that bigger buck is over there on the left, sort of in the bushes behind where those does came out, but I, I can't see him. Um, I'm watching those does and out of the corner of my eye, I catch another brown thing moving on the right, and this buck, the little spike had come back, and he started walking out into the field. So he walks out into the field, and meanwhile, the, the mama doe had been working her way into the middle of the field on the left side of me. 
And mind you, none of them uh, hit the scrape, which was interesting because I'd been getting a lot of activity on that scrape and, and I was discouraged by the fact that the camera wasn't showing a lot of activity. Um, and all these deer were there, but they did not hit that scrape. And so it just goes to show that you can't, you can't rely solely on what you see on a camera. I mean, I, I know it's like the best thing that we have out there, but, but if you have a feeling that there's deer in an area and you've seen a lot of signs, there's probably still deer in that area. And, and this, I think kind of was eye opening to me because, um, I just figured they'd moved on because they weren't on camera. But anyway, so these two deer are moving out into the field out in front of me and they spot each other and they have a bit of a stare down. The whole time I'm thinking like, I'm screwed because I'm hoping that this buck's gonna come out at some point, but you know, if, if these deer spook, then he's definitely not coming out. And so now they've spotted each other and, and the middle point between them is directly downwind of me about 40, 50 yards away. So I'm thinking they're gonna walk towards each other, they're gonna meet up and one of them is gonna smell me and it's game over. They're gonna run away, all the deer are gonna run away. That big buck's probably gonna hear them, uh, you know, blow and, and run and he's not gonna come out. So, so I'm getting really nervous at this point. And you know, the doe starts making her way to directly downwind and so does the spike and they kind of meet in the middle there and then the the doe has like two yearling fawns you can you can see on them they barely have any spot uh, they barely have spots they're just starting to fade out um they all start moving and meeting up directly downwind of where i'm at and you know i'm i'm really nervous at this point in hindsight I shouldn't have been, but I didn't know this because this all started happening as soon as I got in the tree. I never got to use milkweed to see what the wind was doing. After it all happened, I, I did let some milkweed go to see where the wind was going. And as it turns out, and this actually happens in Florida quite a lot, the wind, like as it warms up all that moisture on the ground, it sort of creates, like we don't really get thermals in Florida, but we sometimes kind of do. If you get high enough, high enough in a tree uh, you can sometimes get a wind that will like lift up so that's exactly what the wind was doing I let that milkweed go and it just lifted up and was being carried you know hundreds of yards before it ever came back down um, so <clears throat> I was in a clear like it really didn't matter which side of me these deer were hanging out on they weren't gonna smell me just because of the way the wind was going but I didn't think to, to check it while all this was going down because I was so focused on these deer. So I'm just getting super nervous because they're all downwind to me. I'm not really 100% sure of this but at one point the, the doe starts acting a little nervous um, and then the spike starts acting a little nervous and the spike trots off he kind of runs away and then the doe kind of runs away and then the fawns kind of start following her and I'm like okay game over they smelled me it's over Uh, she gets to about a hundred yards out um, and then all of a sudden here comes the buck now I don't know if she ran away because she saw the buck or heard the buck because at one point she was looking over her shoulder in that direction like right before she started running so I don't know if that was them leaving like that was a reaction to that buck coming towards them or if they smelled me uh, I, I'll never know that I guess but anyway the buck comes out he starts walking out there to meet up with all these other deer. 
And I'm like, okay, does in this area, you can't shoot them. They're not as weary. So maybe they're cool with, you know, my scent. But this buck, he's, he's an older buck. I mean, he's not super old, probably two and a half year old. Um, he's got to know what the smell of a human means. So when he gets downwind, I'm screwed. And he gets downwind to me like 60, 70 yards and uh, doesn't seem to care. Um, and, and eventually he actually starts moving closer to me. moving towards me directly into the wind and I'm like at some point he's going to catch my wind he's going to take off so as soon as he comes within range I'm letting an arrow fly I made this decision I was like that's it when he hits 50 yards which is a distance I feel very comfortable shooting um when he gets within 50 yards I'm gonna range him and I'm gonna let one fly so he starts coming to this bush and I'll, I'll highlight this on the the video right here this is the bush i ranged it this was 50 yards so if he got in front of this bush i was going to shoot but he never really gave me an opportunity he kind of got to about 50 yards and he, he didn't really give me a broadside shot and I start seeing these does moving towards my right <clears throat> and one of them starts actually walking back towards me on the right side um, which is you know potentially going to give me a much shorter shot so he starts to follow the doe and so um, I'm like okay he's going to come out on this side and when he gets past this bush I'm going to let it rip so I range this little stick because the younger doe walks right past this little pine tree sapling. So I'm like, he's gonna walk the same trail. When he gets there, I'm gonna let it fly. So I range it 40 yards. Now, my range finder sucks. It's like an Amazon special. It's cheap, it works. I mean, it's lasted a really long time, but one of the things I hate about it is when you range, the number underneath the crosshairs, which is bigger, is your direct line distance. And then up top, it'll first show you angle, and then it'll show you the angle corrected distance. And I need to train my brain to look at that. But you know what, at 40 yards, it really doesn't make a huge difference. So I really only pay attention to it when they're up close, if they're like at 10 yards and it really matters. So um, I range it 40 yards and I'm like, it's cool. If he's a little bit in front, a little bit behind, it's going to be fine. I'll use my 40 yard pin. No problem. As you can see in this video, when he comes out from behind this, this palm, this uh, cabbage palm, he's not, he's not walking the same line as that, that little doe. He's walking closer to me than the doe. So he's already like two yards closer factor in the angle compensation that's another yard so now we're like 37 Matt. by the time I draw up and send this arrow he's already like 
at about 36 yards. And I know that because after it all happened, I ranged that spot where he was standing he was 36 yards. And um, I was still set on 40, <clears throat> put the 40 yard pin, you know, mid height on the body and let it fly. And I mean, my air, I saw my arrow like pass over his back by an inch. And I was devastated because I knew immediately that I had missed. No. Damn it. He was closer. He was closer. Oh. I had him at 40. Let's talk about what I did wrong. What I should have done. Uh, you know, how I could have prevented this. The first thing is every step that one of these animals takes when they're in your presence the whole entire scenario changes and you have to recalculate everything and and i screwed that up because i made the decision i was going to shoot I, I screwed it up twice i made the decision i was going to shoot as soon as he came in range because he was downwind which by the time he was where i was actually going to shoot him he wasn't downwind anymore so i didn't have to be nervous about that two um I ranged the spot that I was going to shoot him at and got stuck in my head that I was shooting 40 yards even though he was closer. So you just have to keep recalculating every single time they move, every single time anything happens, you have to recalculate that distance and I, I screwed that up. I was so nervous, um, you know, watching him for so long that I just, my brain wasn't functioning properly. Um, and it really sucks, you know, putting weeks of scouting in and, you know, sitting all those hours in a tree to get that one opportunity and then to blow it because, not because I didn't shoot well, you know, as you, you can see in the video when I shoot, that the bow is super steady, it doesn't flinch, you know, the arrow flies, you know, super straight, I didn't torque the bow or anything. Um, I know exactly where the pin was when I released it. I know that in my mind I made a good shot, I just put the damn pin in the wrong spot. So like I made it a poor decision and that's what cost me this opportunity. Um, and it, it really sucks knowing that. Um, you know, I mean, frankly, those are the two things, th those are the two main things that I, I screwed up on. Um, and so what I started doing uh, when I got home to make sure that I would be able to um, prevent this from happening in the future is I started actually practicing shooting at distances with my pin set a couple yards above or below the distance so that I could start to sort of guesstimate how high or low I need to put that pin to still hit the vitals. Um, that's honestly something I never really thought about doing. I'm always just like range it, set the pin, you know, and, and send it at that range. I never really think about like how, how much do I need to aim up, up or down to hit vitals. And so I would advise you guys to start doing some practicing on that because um, I think it'd definitely come in handy when, you know, when everything doesn't work out perfectly and you don't know the exact range. You know that he's about 40 but he stepped a little bit closer since you ranged him and so you have to make an estimate in your head um, you know knowing kind of how much your arrow drops or or hits higher uh, because of those changes in distance is, is really important so in doing that exercise i i found out that I, I was right i i did everything right except for the decision of what distance i was shooting and here's a little clip showing me showing you uh, just how off my shot actually was. So after missing the buck this weekend, um, I ranged it at like 30, well, I ranged a branch at 40 yards and I was planning to shoot it standing by the branch. I figured eh, if he's like standing right in front of it, half a yard, a yard, doesn't matter. Just shoot for my 40 pin. Well, he made a couple steps. By the time I shot, he was like 36, 37 yards. Um, and I shot over his back and I just shot at my target to see if, if, if I just made a crappy shot, 
No, I did not make a crappy shot. What I did was I put the shot exactly where I thought it was gonna go, but that's me shooting for this with my 40 yard pin at 36 yards. So after, after that 30 yards, it really starts to drop quick. I didn't realize how much. So I sent it right over his back. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something from that. And, and aside from the fact that I didn't harvest that buck, uh, I think it's a pretty cool video. There's some you know, really cool deer interactions. I think my favorite part is when the, the two deer like see each other and they, they I mean, I, I sped up a lot of this video to make it less boring, but they had a stare off where they just stood completely still and stared at each other for what felt like five to 10 minutes. It was probably only like three minutes, but I mean, they were just staring completely still. Um, so yeah, anyway, every single hunt that isn't successful is always a lesson. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I've had a lot of lessons, um, in my hunting career. That's my story. I hope you guys learned something from it. And, uh, if you guys want to save a little bit of money, uh, during this hunting season, if you need a mapping app, um, check out hunt stand. Uh, it's a great app. We've got a couple videos about you know some of the awesome features that it has, and you can get 10% off by using the link down in our description. Um, and what else we got? Oh, if you need anything done to your bow, go see Brandon at Skull Hill Archery. Um, he's literally one of the nicest guys and best bow techs we've ever dealt with. Um, he's up in Okeechobee. He's got everything you could ever possibly dream of needing for your bow, so go check him out and uh, make sure you're subscribed and like this video and tell your friends about it and we'll catch you guys next week on Swap and Stomp. Peace.